All right, everyone. Welcome back to another episode here on the Lure Lab, a part of the Serious Angler Network. And this is episode 40. And we're going to dive into a couple things here of the do's and don'ts when it comes to Texas rigging soft plastics. And we're not really going to dive in to too many baits today, but we're actually going to talk about like when to snell or when to tie your like your standard knot, a Pelmar knot, or a trilene knot, or a fisherman's knot, depending on what hook and what plastic you are using, and also what size weight, and then a couple of combos to go with it. So if you guys do enjoy this episode and you're listening on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. And those who are listening on MP3, if you like a lot of the information here, you might want to jump over to the YouTube page, which is down in the description below, because there is going to be some visual things that come through this episode. But first, I want to talk about when we're fishing soft plastics, you can cast them or flip them. And we're going to be talking broad approach, both categories, casting and flipping. And I want to start light to heavy, fluorocarbon to braid, and little things that you can do. But first, we're going to dive right into fluorocarbon. I have a setup here that I like to worm with. Um, you can do a lot of casting offshore with it or keep it close to you and flip it away. But this is a Daiwa Zillion SV, the JDM version. And you'll see that I have a little black 5-inch Senko on here with a 3 16th ounce weight. But I want to talk into this a little bit more because you'll see here on the Black Sanko that this has more of a wide gap hook. And the reason why I use a wide gap hook and when I would use an offset worm hook because there's two different times that you want to use each one. And this is just my opinion. So you can bury me down in the comments below if you're on YouTube or reach out to the Instagram page and tell me why I'm wrong. That does not matter to me. I love everyone's opinion. But first, uh, a couple hooks that I have found to really like for worm fishing. This includes like your Yamamoto Senkos, uh, swimming worms, etc. And that hook that I have really liked, there's two different ones, for casting long distances with it and hopping it. That is going to be an Ichikawa PK2, and hopefully it focuses here. And the reason why I like this hook is because it is Teflon coated. And it's got that super quick hook. It's super sharp. You're not going to lose a lot of fish. It's slightly offset enough to where you're not going to have to worry about the hook getting in the way of the hook eye. And it's also raised. And this sits in a worm really well. The sizes that I like to use for worms are 4 odd, sometimes a 5 odd. if I go up to a 6-inch. If I'm using a 4-inch, which is extremely rare, I might go down to a 3 odd. But I like the PK2 when I'm casting super long distances and the setup is like 15 pound fluorocarbon, a 3 16th ounce weight. And as you saw here on the specific setup, specific setup, I actually, let me if I can grab it here again. I have this worm pegged. And when I am casting and swimming, casting, swimming, hopping i always peg my worms and there are times that you can get away with not pegging it and that's only time i'll do that is if i'm up close and personal 15 feet 20 feet i don't have to skip but i'm laying it into trees and i like that because sometimes when you lay it on top of a tree your bait will land on top of a branch and that weight will fall if you give it slack and when that weight falls your worm will go down after it, kind of like a makeshift, Carol a free swing Carolina rig. And I feel like sometimes you can get a lot of bites doing that. But if I'm casting it out, if I'm flipping it, if I'm swimming it, always pegged, I can skip it a lot better. It goes through grass a lot better. Now, when you want the differences, I already talked about casting. You want like an offset worm hook. But when you're up close and personal like flipping it in the milfoil or coontail or sparse grass, or you have a rock pile that you want to cast to, that's when I'll go to a Hayabusa WRM 956-4-0. I found this to be the perfect extra wide gap. It's not even really a wide gap. It's more of a wide gap. So it's 
in between an extra wide gap and a worm hook. But I like this one specifically for worms like a cutter worm or a Senko when I'm flipping it and pitching it 15, 20, 30, maybe 40 feet away. I find with that little bit extra wide gap in the offset on that hook, when you hit them with like a big sweep hard hook set, I shouldn't say sweep, like a three-quarter crack. When you hit them three quarters and you're re reeling, I find this hook penetrates the fish's mouth incredibly and it's always in like the top corner and since i started using this hayabusa wrm 956 hook with the nrb coat which is like a slick coat you'll notice there's a trend i use a lot of slick coats on hooks i think they penetrate a lot better sorry to go on a tangent there but that hook i find penetrates them so hard and so fast that it's almost hard to get them out. I've actually bent this hook with pliers trying to get it out of the fish's mouth. And I'd rather destroy a hook when I get them in the boat than have a hook flex out and break on me when I'm setting that hook. And that's the preferred hook that I use for flipping it. The backtrack a little bit, the PK2, or I think the other one's like a PK3. I have it right here. Nope, they're all PK2s. The TS3 we're going to get to, which is a flipping hook. But, yeah, like I said, the PK2 for casting, more than 50 feet. And if you're up close and personal, you're going to go to this wide gap offset worm hook 956. This is just for Sanko-style baits, yum dingers, 5-inch, 6-inch, vary your size, find what you're comfortable with. Don't overpower the bait with 17 or 20-pound fluoro. I will flip it on 17 if I'm in the crap you know like real thick stuff trees thicker grass but you can still slide it through because there's pockets or docks i'll go to a 17 but if i'm casting really far distances 15 all the way super sparse open water you will not lose fish on that setup rod seven foot three to seven foot five medium heavy up close and personal, I actually prefer a 7.3. If I'm casting, I like a 7.5, seven, 7.6 seven, for a worm. I just feel like when they get it at a long distance with fluorocarbon, you're able to really dot, drive that hook home far away from the boat, and you just don't lose fish, in my personal opinion. Now, let's jump to the next bait category, and this is going to be strictly flipping with fluorocarbon. I'm going to use the same setup, a 7.3 medium heavy to a 7.6 medium heavy. Not heavy because you don't want to overpower it. This is going to be like a 17, 20, or 22-pound fluorocarbon. And we're always using, when I'm doing this flipping grass, the lightest weight I will use is like a 3 8 Oh, 5 16 So if it's super sparse and under 5 foot, I'll go 5 16 From 5 to 8 foot, if it's sparse, I'll go 3 8 on sparse grass, 3 8 tungsten, always tungsten. And then as you progress out deeper, you go heavier, or if the vegetation is thicker, you go heavier. So when I'm flipping creature style baits, um, 5 8 is virtually like my absolute favorite spot. I find that on fluorocarbon, 5 8 is about as heavy as you can go before you start running into issues of trying to move too much weight with a line that actually does stretch a little bit. And then that will be a braid setup, which we'll hop into here shortly. But always peg it. Always when you're flipping grass, you're always pegging it with five eighths. If you're on docks, you can step back and not peg. But when I'm in grass pegs, it goes through a lot easier. And baits that I like to use um, are going to be like Blue Crow Rage Bug. Magnum, Rage Menace, or like a Pit Boss. Like these are probably my three go-to flipping baits. They've caught me a ton of fish over the last couple of years. And there's other ones like a Craw Tube, which I feel like when you start getting into bigger, bulkier creature baits, that should be another episode that we can talk about because the hooks are completely different. Everything's just slightly a little bit different when you start hopping into flipping a tube. And I feel like that is something that can be done on a completely different episode so if you'd like to hear that let us know but as we're talking about these baits with fluorocarbon i never use a straight shank hook i'm always going more of a wide gap and this is just the one i grabbed gamakazu makes a good one hayabusa makes a good one 
I have always been an owner cutting point fan. The issue with cutting points is they're super sharp for about the first four fish, three to four fish. Then you'll notice your hook points start to roll on them. And if you don't know what a cutting point is, let me pull it out of here so you can see the hook point. See if you can see that there. It might be a little hard. But the cutting point hook, virtually, it's like the end of a spear. It's going to have, it's going to come out and make a point, And then it's got a range, like a, a raised peak to the top of it. And that helps for penetrating quickly through. And also it's a little bit wider at front. So it makes a bigger hole. And that's the only issue I find with cutting points is one, the hook points roll, but two, sometimes it makes a bigger hole than you need it to. And when you have a fish come up thrashing on the surface, you can actually come loose if you give them a little bit too much slack. So the cutting points, the only thing I like to do is reel as hard as I can and get them in the boat. But a four out I find works really well for the rage, the rage magnum menace grub and the pit boss. But for the blue, like for the rage bug, I think a three out works a little bit better for that. But <clears throat> this is only flipping and pitching. I never cast them. Like I said, 17, 20, 22 pound flora, always peg standard fisherman knot, whatever your favorite one is. Double it up, double Palomar. They're all great knots. And when we start swip, when we start to switch over to like, punching grass that's where it gets a little bit trickier or you just flip with braid and you can use basically the same setup when it comes to flipping with braid and the rods here i have are pretty much identical except for one is a super high modulus blank and the other one is an extremely balanced blank but i like the more balanced blank for braid because it has a little bit deeper parabolic bend to it. You don't want a super fast rod, but you want a rod that's going to bend deeper when you hit those fish. And that's why I'm going to go to a Hayabusa TS3 or a Kamikatsu makes a, like a light cover flipping hook, which I find works really good for 40 or 50 pound braid. I wouldn't go any higher than that on that real person. Oh, sorry. On that rig, I wouldn't go any higher than 50 pounds with the light finesse hook. This one is a much heavier duty hook. You can go up to an 80 pound braid. Me personally, when I flip grass here in New York, we don't have a ton of thick, super matted up vegetation. I can get away with a 50 pound braid or a 40 pound. I'm almost always flipping with 50 when I have to. And my starting weight for that is going to be, always be five eighths but i find like a three quarters is literally the money spot for flipping with braid you can feel everything comes through you want to use a higher carrier count braid something that's teflon coated because that's going to be quieter when it goes through the grass and this is the only time this is the only time i will ever ever snell knot is when i flip with braid and i'm going over three quarter ounce and I think this is an important thing to know. And I'll show you here without rigging one up because I think on my braid rod right now, it's a 5 8 But what happens is with, let me grab cutting point hook real fast. What happens when you get up to that three quarter ounce and you're running like an EWG with braid? If you look at it here, let's see if I can show you. So here's the Here's the weight, right? Let me see if I can switch it this way. Here's the weight. As you can tell, when it comes down in line, that hook point points basically right at the base of the weight right here. And it's really hard to see, and I apologize for those who are tuned in on YouTube. But it's really hard to see because it's getting in the way of this weight. So when a bass clamps down on this, he's going to grab that weight, and you're going to set the hook on a standard like braid if you tied it to an EWG. I feel like... That weight is just going to pop that fish's mouth open and it's going to rip that hook right through. And you can't even like, it won't even grab my finger. I can run it right across that. And that, and that's because of the weight itself, I feel like. So that is when I will snow knot with braid. Because when you get bit with a snow knot, what it does is it, and this is the biggest downside I think to it, is it causes your hook to rise up. 
when you set that hook. So the hook point becomes more exposed. The plastic will fold over. This comes up and it pins the fish in the top of the mouth. But what I find is a big disadvantage and I lose a lot of fish flipping with braid is say they grab it from like the side and you go to jack them. All of a sudden that hook will turn. And it'll pull like this. It'll turn to the side instead of coming up. It'll turn to the side and it'll pull right out of the fish's mouth and never hook them because the plastic will block it. That's the only downside I have to flipping. If I can flip 99% of the time and get away with it, I flip with fluorocarbon up to where it's impossible to get a 5 8 ounce weight through the grass because, one, I feel like I'm going to get more bites first. And second, I'm going to lose a lot less fish because a lot of times with braid, it's overpowering and you hit them. That way it comes flying by. I don't want to lose a tooth. I just want something that I can get the fish hooked and get them out. And I feel way more comfortable flipping with fluorocarbon and sparse grass than braid. But there is a time and a place. And that's why I wanted to talk about when to use each hook. And I think it is 100 and 10% without a doubt dependent on the size of the weight you're using. Anything under 5 8 use an EWG. Find an EWG you like and flip it on fluorocarbon. If you're going above 5 8 it's a braid rod. You need to be flipping with a straight chain hook. There's a lot of guys out there who will say straight chain hook all the way. You land more fish. I personally have tried it. I think I lose more fish on a straight chain hook unless I'm snow knotting with braid. But fishing is, without a doubt, 110% a confidence thing. And if you have confidence in what you are doing, and we cannot reiterate this enough, if you have confidence in what you are doing, you will catch more bass, you will hook more bass, and you will put more bass on the bank, boat, and kayak. And it's just ultimately what it comes down to. Every single person who tunes in here on the Lure Lab, the Serious Angler Network, they have their own confidence baits. They have their own confidence hooks. They have their own tungsten brand, rods, reels, line that they like. Ask 10 fishermen in a line what they like, and I almost guarantee every single one of them will probably tell you a different answer unless they are friends. And a lot of times, friends will use the same stuff as whoever perfected it in that friend group, and they'll fish together, and they just it's just the way it happens. But if you have your own independent opinion and thought and You've learned yourself, you will have a different thought and opinion than most of the other anglers who you fish around. And I know whoever is tuned in here, if you are new here and you haven't listened to the Serious Angler Network, and there's plenty of episodes in the past where me and Bailey have literally bantered on about the perfect setups, the perfect line, the perfect weights, the perfect hooks. And the thing is, we always have a different one that we like until we get out on the water and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's good. Or, wow, this is crap compared to what you're using. Like, I should probably switch over to that. So, and another big thing that I can not reiterate enough is the fact that depending, not every bait works with the same hook. This is just a generality to get you started with flat-sided creature baits like a rage bug or a sweet beaver or a rodent, anything in that realm. That's where you would use like an extra wide gap hook if you're not flipping with braid. If you're flipping with braid, then you're going to go back to the TS3. You can use all the same baits on that hook. You can use a Sanko on that hook. You can use whatever you want. Just figure out what works for you. Get on the water. Go out and catch more bass. Now, there is going to be a juice of the show here by Do It Molds, and I'm sure for those who are serious bass fishermen, you know what's going on and what I'm about to talk about when it comes to braid. But when you are fishing braid, as you know, it fades, right? So the Do It Molds juice of the show, we don't have a question. We just have advice for you. Carry a big, thick, sharpie pen black in your boat because when you're flipping that grass the last thing you want to happen is to have this bright green line coming through there or a white or a green braid that faded to white go up and make like the first 10 feet of it from your weight to your guide black the rest of it can be white you can see it better above the water but you if you're if you're flipping 20 foot of grass 
make sure you have 20 foot of braid that's colored black with that Sharpie because when it hits into the water underneath that canopy, the water is going to be dark. If you have this bright white or bright green white line that's faded shooting through there, I can almost guarantee you're getting less bites because they're like, oh, that looks good. Why is there this bright line running past my face? Yes, bass aren't that smart. And yes, they still are going to bite. But by making that line black, I feel like it hides it a lot better going through that grass. And you're going to get 5 to 10% more bites. And that's just my personal opinion. You can run to the bank. You can tell me I'm full of it. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Just Always have a black Sharpie in your boat. Experiment. Get out there. Catch more bass. I just want to say thank you always to everyone who's tunes in here. Um, 40th episode of the Lure Lab. This is awesome, guys. We we love everyone who tunes in on a weekly basis. I want, I am going to send out a challenge though. I want everyone who tunes into this episode and every episode of the Lure Lab to get in our DMs on the Lure Lab over on Instagram and start sending us ideas for shows. There's a ton coming, but I want to hear what everybody wants to hear who tunes into this and go out and share it with your friends. Let's, let's grow this thing. Let's keep growing it. And Selfless plug here. Head over to the Serious Angler Network website. It's down there in the description if you're listening to MP3 or YouTube. And buy up some merch. Support us over here. We greatly appreciate you guys. You all rock. So if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. There's going to be content coming every week. If you're listening on MP3, your favorite podcast platform, please leave us a review. Uh, It helps this podcast be shown and seen to more people who love bass fishing like you who is tuning in. And I and Bailey and Deacon, as we're talking about bass fishing, um, we love it, guys. We love all the interactions. And we will see everyone next Saturday.